Brookings is still a place、uh, where people can think as、uh, they wish and call things as they see them. It's the openness of the conversation that really distinguishes this place from an awful lot of other places that call themselves、uh, think tanks. There's diversity of view in the program. One of the great things about this floor is that people are always talking to each other, and sometimes they're arguing with each other. We don't feel obligated to have the same view on everything. The whole fight over、uh, campaign finance reform, which is still going on because of Citizens United,、um, so much of that was the product of work、uh, that Tom Mann did. We're talking about the breakdown of Congress, Sarah Binder. Is on top of that. Bill Galson and I had some success on the horrible、uh, confirmation and appointment process, where nobody wants to work for the government because it takes forever to get through. Steve Hess is one of the best chroniclers of the ups and downs of the media. Daryl、uh, was ahead of the curve creating this、uh, center on technology and. Um, now we've got Elaine K. Mark, who was the reinventing government person in the Clinton administration, who now proposes that we may need even more reinvention. Now that's a lot of、uh, impact on things that actually matter. Education is、uh, a critical part of、uh, of the economy and the and the civics of, of, of the nation. I mean, I think we all kind of get that. And yet, education, compared to、uh, other major parts of the economy, has been a backwater in terms of、uh, the use of evidence, in terms of decision making. We're the Brown Center on Education Policy here at Brookings. Our emphasis, I think, is different from、uh, other think tanks in town that focus on education, in that we are quantitative social scientists. And so we operate in real time on public policy issues that、uh, important decisions are being made about, and we try to crunch numbers and synthesize research that's already been done to inform that debate、uh, with real evidence. How did deals get done、uh, in Washington? How did deals get done on Capitol Hill? What are the dynamics that would help legislators and lawmakers get to the table more often and more successfully、uh, reach deals? First and foremost, I'm a Congress watcher.、Uh, there's nothing that Congress doesn't do that I don't find interesting. I've been looking at the institution for almost 20 years, and so I'm trying to think about institutional changes,、uh, other procedural changes that might help create the negotiating space、uh, for members to come come to the table. There's been a sort of a groundswell change in Washington it, itself, right? First of all, with the arrival of Republican majorities in the middle of the 1990s, and it affected think tanks, right? There's a lot of competition from much more activist think tanks、uh, to be taking what we think of as advocacy positions, which isn't really what Brookings was doing.、Uh, over the years here, Brookings has really found, I think, its way into the niche here to both do good social science research and to be relevant and accessible. Uh, to people in Washington, to lawmakers, and to policymakers. I started a, a small blog with a couple friends,、uh, Jack Oldsmith and Bobby Chesney. We、uh, called it Lawfare. If you look at where our readership comes from,、uh, it comes from the Department of Defense, it comes from the Department of Justice, it comes from the State Department, from the House, from the Senate,、uh, from the White House. From the CIA, from the intelligence community more generally, and from the courts,、um, it also has a real following in the press. Some of the writers who write for Lawfare, particularly Jack Goldsmith and Wells Bennett, did a huge amount of material on the Syria AUMF discussions that really led the conversation on that subject in the rest of the press. Lawfare has also expanded to include things like a podcast. A book review—it's kind of become a full-featured magazine over the years. Everybody cares about whether the government works well or not,、um, for two very important reasons. One, it's your tax dollars, okay, and、uh, therefore it matters how they're being spent and whether they're being spent efficiently. And secondly, the government is our last resort. So government tends to be 
not just about sort of bureaucracy and uh, sending out payments to people, but it tends to be important in really life or death circumstances. And then, believe me, people care how the government works. The Center for Effective Public Management is the center devoted to study of how the government actually works. Um, and there's two sides to that. One is making sure that the ongoing business of the government is done in the most modern, most efficient, and most effective way. So we will deal with things like the budget process, and maybe it's time to rethink a budget process that hasn't been changed since 1974. It's really time for uh, us to take another look at just what government does. Is it time for a new federalism? Is it time to move some issues out of Washington and back to the states? So there's a lot of challenges that were not here 20 years ago that we hope that we can address in this program going forward. Everybody wants to improve education, healthcare, energy independence. Uh, people are interested in having government do a better job. So people should care about our subject matter because it is very much linked to some of the most important issues facing the United States. We have outstanding access to people in government, business, and academia. In many respects, Brookings is a great gathering place. We love to bring together people from the public sector and the private sector so that they can learn from one another. A lot of the ways in which we achieve impact is by the access that we have to policymakers, uh, to people in media, and people in the business community. Governance studies has grown over the last five years. We've hired a number of new people, including a number of young people. We have nine new fellows who've joined us. We're trying to bring the next generation of scholars to Brookings. I think the big challenge has been moving Brookings into becoming a 21st century think tank. We need to use new tools of social media outreach. We need to get beyond the beltway. We're doing much more international work. We have an international anti-corruption conference in Prague that we hold each year. We're also starting starting to compare the United States with China in terms of healthcare. So the work has really expanded enormously.